I'm at Standing Bear Farm right now. It's the morning after we got here. It's like, well, I guess it's like 11, 11.30 right now. Everyone's gone pretty much except me. I just wanted to stay here. It was just me and one other guy in this six person cabin last night. For dinner, they had like barbecue and hot dogs and burgers. People who work here or volunteer here, I don't really know if they work or what, but um, they are just really in the moment people. And that was very, awesome emotional boost last night. We were just sitting around the campfire talking and I was also in the kitchen talking with some of the workers and yeah, it's uh, it's been really great. Oh yeah, there's also dogs. I'll, I'm gonna really miss the dogs because man, they're, they're just so nice. There's dogs and cats all over. So that was the fire pit area and across right there was the resupply. This is the little kitchen area where you can cook all the frozen stuff you can get the resupply. Right here is where we could get the dinner, and that's the shower room. And I'm just leaving. I pet Sadie for a good while, so that took up some of my morning. <laughs> and I'm heading out again. This is the tree house that's part of the hostel. You could stay there too. And that's right along the water. And that's the road I gotta walk back down to get to the trail. I just cannot get myself to leave there. It's, it's just such a relaxing place. And they're known for that too. Like the guys at work, they were telling me like everyone just goes there and doesn't leave. I actually saw one of the through hikers that we've been hiking with. He's been there for four days now, just doing work first day. Part of our group that we've been hiking with every now and then, they actually came in for lunch and they're still there. So yeah, I was hanging out with them around the, the fire for a bit. We're playing guitar. It's just like, just never-ending good times at that place. I got some Tom Petty blasting and we're back on the trail. And we got the first uh, tree down on the trail right at the beginning of the path pretty much. I'm taking my time today because today just feels like a great hiking day. I'm really really enjoying the hiking today. Um, which is surprising because I just climbed a thousand feet in elevation. <laughs> um, this is also the first day where I see bees all over. Like a lot of the trail has been covered with leaves and the bees are all over in that. So I've seen a few dozen bees by now and I'm actually getting attacked by like gnats right now. So, so, so strange. We went from no bugs really to complete snow yesterday. And then here I'm getting like attacked by bugs. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just... It, it's still surreal. It's surreal. We just went through all of those, like, a few hard days in the Smokies, and then um, we're at the hostel, which was surreal in itself, and now it's, like, a warm day where I'm like, I overdressed. I need a tank top on. <laughs> we're reaching the top of the first peak. I was so into my music and stuff, I didn't even realize I was almost there. But, uh, yeah, this is the top of Snowbird Peak. I'm sorry, but other than that, mountains surrounding in a 360 and back onto the trail after that interesting viewpoint being blocked by that electrical thing i'm about four miles or so in to the day after i think it was muskrat shelter I stayed with some of the group that, like I said, came to the Standing Bear pretty late yesterday. The privy yesterday was so funny because it was really small. And when you go up, you're like, all right, it's going to be a really small one. But when you go up to it, it's like up to your chest. So anytime anyone went to the bathroom, you could, hold, you could just see them like sitting on the toilet. It's like, it was uh, definitely the most awkward uh, privy situation we've had so far. Fresh Grounds is um, doing some trail magic at lemon gap today really looking forward to that <laughs> i hope he's still there when i get there and i'm almost at the top of max patch now that is the peak of the first hill funny down there there's like 30 cars or something ball parked people can just drive up here it's just, it's just a funny thing i think that i just walked all up here and people just drove <laughs> like it takes them minutes it takes me hours <laughs> There's a lot of, there's gonna be a lot of mountains like that along the trail where people just drive up. <laughs> Very close to summit now. And I officially made it to the top of Max Patch. And there's a bunch of people up here like picnicking, which I was 
wasn't expecting, like people flying kites and stuff. This is a view I did not expect. It's like almost like the sound of music up here. There's still a lot of snow where the sun didn't hit the hills. Um, I didn't really see any snow on the path on the way up, just like bits and pieces, but I would see it on a lot of the surrounding mountains. And I have no clue what this contraption is hanging. <laughs> it is once again right below Max Patch. It's like a very Blair Witch Project-esque. <laughs> um, yeah, very random. This is the longest green tunnel I've seen on the trail so far walk through a bunch of it. Super muddy. I'm 0.2 miles away from Lemon Gap, so this is the moment of truth to see if I finally am able to experience this trail magic. I know one of 10, 12 pound food bags. Yeah. So we always try to keep our food. That guy will not stop feeding, feeding you. It's like Hansel and Gretel, where he just keeps trying to give you more and more food. I was over there for more than two hours. He literally cut up a uh, potato while we were there and made homemade home fries right there. And he just kept piling them in even when he said stop. He just piled them into your plate. It's hard to hike with a full stomach, but yeah, that was awesome. And yeah, everyone, uh, he was trying to get everyone to stay and eat breakfast tomorrow. But um, I mean, a couple other people were like trying to get the heck out of there. And I was like, I'm gonna rip the bandaid off and put my pack on and get up, get up and get out. <laughs> First grounds made a joke and said like, uh, well, I'm gonna be up north, I'm gonna be following you guys and if you see me, don't run away or I'll chase you. <laughs> Cause he knows I'm trying to like avoid, avoid stopping there for too long. <laughs> but yeah, that was, he, he was, he was awesome. And all the people that were with him were helping him. But the trail magic were really nice. <sighs> so yeah, I finally, Experience, fresh ground, trail magic. I just powered through that 1,000 feet of elevation gain. That's because of trail magic. It really gave me energy again. But right now I'm at the top and surrounded by just a whole field of these pricker bushes that have been getting me the past few days. If I go to go to the bathroom in the woods, then I get stabbed by them. I would just walk up the hill and get stabbed by them. So yeah, this is like a booby trap area. Well, I'm officially night hiking and still have no clue where I'm going or anything. I don't know if I'm gonna go to the shelter. I mean, I would go to the shelter, but people, I don't know if they're gonna be asleep and get mad if I wake them up coming in, sitting in my tent, but... I might just do that, I don't know. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this gap and see how it is, if there's like a place for a tent because the tent site I just passed, it didn't really look like there's a space for a tent. So I was, I'm a little confused about that. I didn't stop at the gap, even though there was a tent space, just because I know it's not the safest thing to do is stop at gaps where there's road access. I really wanted to because it was like seriously the best tent space. And I was coming from the gap pretty much. There was a large animal, I don't know if it's a deer or a bear, but a large animal like right off the path. The headlamp just shows any creatures that are around me because their eyes shine. I'm going into Hot Springs. I'm only like three miles away. Not even from the Laughing Heart Lodge. That's the hospital. Um, yeah, I made, I, I can't believe I night hiked last night. I was getting, it was like, I feel like I was going my mind a little bit by the end of it. That was my longest mileage for any day. I think it was 20, 23 miles exactly. And that was with that like two and a half hour break at Fresh Grounds Trail Magic. Crazy. I did that. But yeah, I, I actually had a really fun day yesterday. I'm really excited. I'm gonna go eat at the tavern, probably, and then I know, um, I know another large group of hikers will be eating at another one of the pubs down at five o'clock, so I'll probably be eating with them.
yesterday all I did was go to, to the tavern and the Iron Horse which is also basically another tavern and restaurant we are uh, there was just a great group of people there. There's tons of the through hikers there. And a group of six of us stayed out until like past midnight, which is like the town closes like before that. So we were out way after the town closed. Um, yeah, that that's probably, I don't know. Last night was probably like my number one memory of the trail just because it was with such a great group of people. And then I came back to my hostel in Helava and I had a room together. He's the one I was with um, at Standing Bear. So yeah, we already knew each other from there, but yeah, we were talking for several hours after we got back. So yeah, that was awesome. Today, um, woke up, Helva and I went to the diner that's right next door. He asked me to go with him, so I went there, and then there was a bunch of other through hikers there, so we were talking. Then afterwards, we, a group of six of us, went to the hot springs, and it wasn't as you would probably think of it. It wasn't an actual hot spring. It was more like you sat in a hot tub. And, um, but yeah, that was still fun and my knees feel a lot better. Is that Gator? <laughs> I'm like, I'm vlogging right now and I'm like, I think I see you. <laughs> this is Gator. We run into each other all the time. <laughs> I'll see you later. And here's the main strip of Hot Springs, North Carolina. Right here is the tavern where we were at last night until all sorts of hours over at the end of the section of the building on the right is the Iron Horse where we had a group of like 30 people and if you go past the railroad tracks off to the left that's where the hot springs are and right across the street is the Outfitters which I have yet to go to. And here's the inside of the tavern and as you can see we wiped out the Boone's Farm wine last night and they wiped it off the board. We just began our slack pack and we're already running into people going northbound from our group and they're really confused. Mowgli, I can't pronounce his name ever. He is a triple crowner. He's done even more than just a regular triple crown. So he, he, so he was with Fresh Grounds and yes, last night offered um, to slack pack us, but instead of just going northbound, he drove us up and we're going southbound back to Hot Springs today. And I thought that was hilarious because I didn't tell anyone I was doing it. So I was going to pass everyone and just not even like say hey or anything. Just walk by and see if they noticed me. <laughs> but as we came out of the car, we're walking and I saw these guys, three guys cross the street. It ended up being Caboose, Rooster, and Timber. So the guys I was hanging out with the other day at the bar. And they said Helva was right behind them. So we were going up the hill and then I saw Helva. And yeah, so that plan failed. But there are other people that I'm planning on doing a surprise attack. Pitt and Logan will be together, hoping to run into them and see how they react. <laughs> I've now passed a good amount of people. Father Time, Doc, old school. And um, <laughs> when I passed by Doc, he was shaking his head because I think he's like, oh my God. I think he really wanted to slack back. <laughs> Either that or he was just shaking his head, I'm not sure. But we talked and um, yeah, he couldn't believe that we got in the slack pack trail magic, which is awesome. It's just so funny when we go by people. Um, because they get really thrown off. They're like, wait, how are you? Wait, what? <laughs> and um, father time was the best so far. He said like morning and then all of a sudden he's like, wait a minute. And then he realized who it was. Yeah, it's funny because even though it seems like it'd be easier, my calves go up the first hill were actually horrible. And I think it's because they're working differently without the extra weight. So it was, I had to take so many, I should probably took like 10 breaks on the way up that first hill because my, it's like going through my calf into my foot, <laughs> pulling on it. And the other thing that I wasn't expecting is that every time I pass someone, I have like a whole long conversation. <laughs> so it takes a little bit longer. But yeah, this is, this is an awesome experience. It's something that I didn't know if I wanted to do because I was, I, I thought I want to carry my pack the whole way. And so I guess it's in my... I thought that was like my through hiker ethics was no slack packing. I'm really happy I'm doing it. And I'm going southbound too. That's the other thing I didn't mention before. Southbound, checked off. Slack packing, checked off. And still got a few more people that I'm planning on confusing when I walk by them. 
I had heard someone mention there's a fire tower, but when I looked at the map, I didn't see any. And uh, when I was coming up to the sign, I realized that there's a blue blaze today, so there is a fire tower. And I get to the top of the fire tower, and of course, Paris is here. We always hey. meet at the top of fire towers. <laughs> and this is the view we got. Haven't really been able to see anything all day, so it's nice to be able to look out a little bit and see what we climbed. I've officially passed all the tramway that I've been hiking with. I just passed uh, Pitt and Logan, and uh, Logan, I mean, this is a this is a bad hill out of uh, Hot Springs. That's why a lot of people actually go southbound on it. But um, yeah, Logan wasn't looking too hot, so he tried to shave a, a few ounces. I mean, jokingly, he tried to shave a few ounces and like gave some candy away. So got some Jolly Ranchers and root beer barrels for the rest of the way back. Um, hell of a said he was gonna do this and. Apparently he's done everyone, so everyone knows, but he's organizing a birthday celebration for me at one of the gaps. Is it Ash Gap or something? I don't remember. But that'll be in about a day and a half or two from now. So that's cool. People are pretty big about birthday celebrations on the trail here. I don't know, slack packing is like whatever. <laughs> it's like, I thought it was more of a big deal. I thought I was going to be like, oh, I feel like so bad about it. I really don't because it's still... It really doesn't feel that much different than carrying a lot of weight. Um, as far as going southbound, though, that's just, it's really weird. It's a really weird feeling. Like, that, I feel like I'm doing it the wrong way almost. <laughs> but it was cool today to pass everyone and just talk to everyone. Because I never, I never really see all these people in one day, and I just saw everyone. And that was an interesting experience in itself. I also met a couple of new people I've never seen. So that gave me the opportunity to introduce myself to them. But yeah, will I slack pack again? Yeah, I, I would be definitely up for it. It's, uh, I thought I'd feel like uh, cheating the trail a little bit, but I really don't feel that. We saw this on the drive over. It's a, a bridge going across the, the highway. It's the first time I cross a road like this. It doesn't seem like there'd be things like this on the Appalachian Trail. It seems like they would try to keep you away from roads, but uh, I knew these existed because in Jersey, there's quite a few of them. It actually surprised me we haven't run into any yet, as of yet. So, yeah, first, uh, is it overpass? Even if it's just a footbridge or something? Yeah, first overpass crossing right here. Heading back down into Hot Springs, almost at the end of this major downhill. The river is down there, and the town's right there. Yeah, this is a little hard to get down. And I can understand why people say this is hard to get up, but I would much rather, oh man, that hurts me, go up this than, uh, than down, because this is uh, definitely gonna cause some, some inflammation in my knees. Officially made it down to the water level. Thank God. <laughs> so it's about, I don't even know, a mile or so. Walk back and it's all flat. I don't even, I don't even know we go along a river. So this is pretty cool. Going back to the Iron Horse Station. That's where I ate dinner dinner round number two the other night. Um, Stormtrooper said she's in here, so I'm gonna head in here. There's Fresh Grounds again. Fresh Grounds trail magic for breakfast. And then um, Mowgli will be shuttling us over to where we started. I saw Peanut was actually at our hostel. He was there since last night, I didn't even know, just cause I got back in so late. So I caught up with him. He took it pretty easy coming out of standing there because, uh, yeah, he also felt the same energy I did. It's pretty much like a steady five mile climb to the top. Fresh Grounds is saying that it's, I think it's right when you get to the top of the five miles that it's pretty much a ridge line that you're on the whole time. 
I just got to the top of the five mile incline. I took a lunch break at the shelter that was about midway up the hill. Uh, I saw Pitt and Stormtrooper there, so we hung out and talked a bit. And this is the White Cliffs, I believe they're called. And sitting on a rock right now, about to take out a snack. And the cliffs are right here. And have a bunch of mountain ranges I can see layer after layer of. So this is a good spot. And it's my first view from the exposed ridgeline trail. How I'm currently climbing up a ridge, lots of rocks. It's going up a little bit more, so there's probably a better view up there. I can't even see right here, but when I just looked, oh my god, there's hundreds of gnats right there. It's definitely bug season. And now that I'm up a little higher, I can see that not only is there just view on the right, but on the left side, crazy view of all sorts of towns and houses. It looks like a lot of farmland. I just went and rock scrambled and then went down and the rock scrambled back up. This is about like a 20 foot drop or so right here. And we made it to the 300 mile marker. This is the first mile marker I've ever seen. So it's a big achievement for me. 